All right, let's continue our exploration of the basics of set theory and uh, topology. And we are going to look at the thing that is called an epsilon neighborhood of a point. Let's try to draw it first. So we have a real line. We have some point X, on, X not on that real line. And we can surround this point by some neighborhood, not including the boundaries though. So these points are not included. And we may name that interval, or we may name that, yeah, we may name that interval as a as an as a kind of general um, epsilon neighborhood of X not and um, define it as the following. We may say that for any epsilon greater than zero, epsilon neighborhood of X equals to such axis that belongs to R such that such that such that the distance between x and x zero is less than epsilon. When we talk about just a line, just a real line or a one-dimensional space, we it's basically the same as um, telling that x belongs to the interval from x zero minus epsilon to x zero plus epsilon. So we may write this here that x uh, minus, excuse me, x, x not minus epsilon from this point to x not plus epsilon to that point. It's when we talk about this case. Of course, we should mention that if we are in a plane already, and we have a point on a plane x0, then epsilon neighborhood is this circle, right? And if we are in a three-dimensional space, then, and we have a point x0 here, then this boundary or this neighborhood is a three-dimensional sphere and so on. If we go further into dimensions, we will get a sphere of n dimensions. All right, so what do we need this for? And we need this epsilon neighborhood in order to define an open set. So once again, let's draw a line. Let's take an interval starting from zero, starting from zero to one. So all these points belong to that interval that set A, and we say that A is an open set if, if for any X that belongs to A, there exists an epsilon greater than zero such that epsilon neighborhood of X is a subset of A. Let's try to understand what does this mean. So this means that if we pick any any x of our set, this x or that x, so this one or that one, never mind, we there exist an epsilon greater than zero. Uh, so some epsilon greater than zero that the surrounding or the neighborhood epsilon uh, the epsilon neighborhood of our point will be a subset of A. So if we take a closer look, it means that no matter how close we get to the boundaries, since they are not included, since they are not included, we can always surround our point by some epsilon neighborhood. And this interval will be a subset of A. So our set is indeed an open one. Now let's take a look at some examples of some sets that are not open. Let's take a, take a point, just one point two. Is it an open interval? 
Well, no, it's not. Because if we surrounded by some epsilon neighborhood, this neighborhood will not be a subset of our set. And that's fine. Our set can contain only one point. That's perfectly fine. We, of course, know that a set even can contain no points at all. An empty set is also a set, right? So one point is not an open interval. Let's take a look at half interval. If, for example, we include minus two, but we do not include minus one, we can denote it as x belongs to minus two included, minus one not included. Is this set an open interval? Or not? Or is this interval an open set? Well, of course it's not, because if we take minus two as our point and try to surround it by some epsilon neighborhood, not all this interval will be in our set. In fact, only part of it will be. But we cannot say that epsilon neighborhood of this point, and we cannot say that epsilon neighborhood of point minus two is a subset, is a subset of A. That is not true. It's not, it's not a subset of A. That is why um, this half interval is not an open set. All right, this is enough for this short video. We'll continue our explorations further. See you soon, bye.